Thanks so much for the introduction and uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming to another urine talk, although it's a fecal sludge management conference. And I will make a small connection to fecal sludge, which you will see later. And as I've seen, the last talk actually in this section is also about fecal sludge. So for everyone, don't feel that you're in the wrong place. Um, nutrient harvesting from urine, Buna, the title or the name of this project actually means harvest. And we want to use the value that is in urine to promote sanitation. Before I present this project here, I want to introduce two important people. On the right side, you see Teddy Gounden from Ethic Green New Water and Sanitation. He's the PI, Principal Investigator here in Durban. And on the left is Bastian Ette, he's also here in the room. And uh, he's actually the project coordinator, and he's basically all over the place. Um, how does it start? It starts at the toilet. So we have the urine diverted toilets, and the basic goal about urine diverted toilets is not to collect urine. The basic goal is actually to separate liquid from feces so that it's possible to dry the feces more quickly and easily. So you can reduce the volume and you can also reduce the number of pathogens, you can kill the pathogens. And this works pretty fine for some pathogens, but not for all of them. So usually it's not at all about urine. What happens with urine, opposite to the picture that you see here, urine just infiltrates into the ground. So urine is wasted. But still, UDPs have a big advantage. You don't have to empty the pits from ventilated pit latrines. And um, therefore, if the Greeny Water Sanitation installed about 75,000 of those toilets in Ethicrini, especially in peri urban Ethicrini. And if you go to the field trip, you can actually recognize those toilets by the two pipes. So they always have two pipes because they're two drying chambers. And um, they're all over the place and they're scattered in the landscape, so they're usually pretty far away. So what happened so far, the feces was dried and later spread around the toilets, and the urine just went into the ground. And you're all familiar already with the value of urine. And we see here again, urine has most of the nutrients that we excrete. About 80% of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, but also, as we heard before, there are a lot of other nutrients in there as well, which are really important. And uh, about 15 years ago, Erbach realized that by separating urine, we could not only recover those nutrients made as fertilizer, but we could also help wastewater treatment. Because for conventional wastewater treatment, what causes the high costs are actually nitrogen and phosphorus, and you have to remove that in wastewater treatment plants. So this system might also make sense for Switzerland and other countries in Europe and the US. And that was the motivation of EAVAC initially to look into this project. But we see we got together because there was a problem here with urine. Because when the, people, when the areas are populated more and more with people and more and more UDTs are installed here, you might run into an environmental problem. And on the other hand, we don't we lose something which has really a value here in the Queen. So we teamed up E.P. Queenie Ward and Sanitation Erva, and we started this project, the Vuna project. And the goal, the basic goal of the project is to promote sanitation by recovering nutrients from so separated urine. So that's, we can also call it a vision. And we have three objectives. Objective one is to develop a reactive technology so that we can treat the urine, stabilize the urine, and produce a fertilizer. The second one is to find ways and tools how we can manage those urine tanks, which are all over the place, 75,000. And we might also need small decentralized urine treatment reactors. We also have to figure out how we can deal with them. So we don't have a large wastewater treatment plant, we might have 1,000 small ones. And we want to explore the socioeconomic boundaries, because technology alone will not solve the problem. We also need to understand what we have to do so people will actually accept these toilets. Funding and project partners, I know this usually goes in the end, but I already do it here. Um, you might have guessed we got the funding from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and I want to thank the foundation here, and especially Elise Schreckengoss, who is our program manager, not only for the funding that we received, but also for the 
have a support group with that and all the advisors. The main project partner are Eavac and the Fikrini Water and Sanitation and also the Uni University of Kosovo Natal, the Pollution Research Group by Chris Buckley, and the Swiss Federal Institute of Science and Technology in Zurich, ETH. We also have some more partners who don't get direct funding. For example, we're working together with respect to pathogens with the Swiss Technical University in Moscow. And here is the picture of our project team. We just had our annual meeting here in Durban. And you see a lot of the activity leaders here. And that's not the whole group. There are many more people, especially the field workers, but also the people who are taking care of the reactors. So we are a pretty large group. And what I show here, this first result, that's actually the work of those people. And I want to thank all of them here. But it's not the final slide. Now I go into the project itself. So I said there are three objectives. It's the reactive technology, network management, and socioeconomic boundaries. And we populate those three objectives with different activities. In total, about nine to 10. It changes from time to time, depending on the needs that we have. And I start with reactive technology. And we started the whole treatment of urine with a struvite reactor here at PRG at the University of Kosovo Natal. We used a template, a reactor that was developed in Nepal. And this was further developed, and this is the result on the right side, a fully automated struvite reactor. And if you go to the field trip, you will see it. We will present it there. What we produce are those struvite cakes on the left side, on the plate. And what do we do? We produce struvite. Struvite is magnesium ammonium phosphate, so the molar ratio is 1, 1, 1. And because we have so much more ammonia in urine than phosphorus, this is essentially just a phosphorus fertilizer. So we recover phosphorus. And we can recover more than 91%. When we look at the content, <coughs> the nutrient content of urine, especially with respect to the fertilizer value, financial value, uh, phosphorus only makes up about 20% of the financial value. And this is based on a study that we have done uh, with fertilizer prices in Nepal. So if you want to get maximum value out of urine, we have to recover all of the nutrients. And this is the purpose of the second process. It's a complete nutrient recovery, and it's basically a two-step process. You are all familiar that when you have stale urine, urine that was stored for a long time, it really smells terribly. The main compound responsible for that is ammonia, ammonia volatilization. So if you don't want to lose the ammonia, you have to stabilize the urine. And we do that with nitrification, a biological process, where about 50% of the ammonia is oxidized to nitrate. And then we have a one-to-one -one ammonium nitrate solution, but it also contains all the other nutrients, phosphorus, sulfur, potassium, and also the micronutrients. We heard in the other presentation just before, the transportation of urine is an issue. It's costly. So our next goal is to reduce the volume, and we do that with distillation. So we already have a distillation plant in Switzerland at Eavac, and we will get one here in Durban in December, and then we can remove about up to 97% of the liquid. So it's a factor of 30, more or less. And it's still liquid. We still have a liquid fertilizer. So if, you want, if you're curious, and want to hear more about the reactor operation optimization, which is going on here. I recommend the presentation is 225. I think it's in the same room, and it's by Mark Scow. Just uh, the two other activities in reactor technology. One is electrolysis. Why do we look at that? Electrolysis <coughs> might be an option to have very, very small reactors because electrochemical treatment can be much more efficient by using electricity. One example, it's the PhD thesis by hans peter Zölli, and he has shown that with an electrochemical reactor, he can remove about 130 gram nitrogen per square meter per day. This is 100 times higher than what we achieve in biological reactors. So this is a little bit more far away goal, but this might be a technology to be used in very small on-site. Reactors. And another effect is disinfection. We have heard about that yesterday. Hygiene and ecotoxicology. 
what happens with the pathogens in urine. We know that there are pathogens in urine, there is cross-contamination with feces, and we look at those pathogens, viruses, bacteria, helminth X, warm X, and we also look at pharmaceuticals, and especially here in South Africa, antibiotics and antiretroviral drugs are very important. And on the other hand, we also look that we don't produce something in our processes, which is harmful. And here, electrolysis might be problematic because you might have chlorinated byproducts. And on the right, you see the different stages where the urine goes through. First, the urine storage tank. When you store urine, the pH is really high, about 9. And you might already have some hydrolysis under those conditions. And then you have the struvite reactor, the nitrification reactor, and the distillation plant. And at every step, you might remove pathogens and pharmaceuticals. Or in electrolysis, you might produce something that you don't want. <laughs> so much about reactive technology. Let's move on to network management. And the basic question here is, how can we manage a large number of on-site urine tanks, up to 75,000, and decentralized treatment reactors? How do we do that? And uh, it might we could build a react a model, computer model, with 75,000 toilets, but that might get really complicated. The approach that we use is stochastic modeling. And stochastic modeling is you assume a distribution. You assume a distribution of the people that live in the household. You assume a distribution for the urine that's excreted, and how much of the urine that someone excretes actually ends up at the toilet in this, in, at his own toilet. And when you combine those distributions, you might end up with uh, the excretion curve. And this is only one small element of the complete model. And if you want to learn more about this model, you should go to the presentation by Thomas Hook at 2.50, and I think it's also in this room. Socioeconomic boundaries. The center of this objective are actually the toilet users. We need the acceptance of the toilet users and also the motivation of the toilet users. Otherwise, we can actually not achieve that the sanitation system will work. And uh, we have three parts here. One is the assessment of the acceptance of urine diverting toilets. Marit is doing that, she's also here. And the second part is increasing the acceptance of urine diversion by health and hygiene, education. How can we actually explain to the people that this is a good system? This is what Mosipo is doing. It's also here. And the last point, involving toilet users in urine transport. And uh, the idea here is that we could engage the people, the toilet users, to help us with the first mile of the urine transport. And we look at the area, they're really scattered around the toilet. So if the people from EWS have to go to every toilet tank and get the urine, that's really costly. It might be much better if the people bring the urine and they might get some incentive. This can be grants, this can be a voucher for food or any other goods. And by this, we might also be able to raise the awareness for sanitation hygiene. Because they might realize actually urine has a value and sanitation has a value. And if you want to learn more about this, you should go or you should just stay here because Liz will just give a presentation later. And she's standing here on the left side. Okay, so to end up, to finish up this uh, talk, you see all the different activities. It's a pretty large project. And I want to thank all the motivated co workers. Because of that, we actually were able to present some first results. We are half time now. The project will last another two years. And um, there are lots of those people who work in the project here if you have any questions. But otherwise, you can also consult on the website, vuda.ch. Thank you for your attention.